Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to the LGL officially unofficial bringing you coverage of the LGL 2020 summer split finals. Last one, initialized Nightmare is still here on the desk, gentlemen. D3 are one game up in this best of five series over Destination Focus Me. And if you're a V3 fan, it's more of the same from what you've been seeing from this team all split long, isn't it? this series mm -hmm. it was will v3 turn up and just do what they did to sengoku mm. we didn't have a benchmark for dfm we don't really know how good they are turns out in game one not as good as v3 that was uh actually a pretty clean close out from them it really was and I'm, I'm looking at least to say dfm put up a fight and that's what mm. i want to see it felt like uh the likes of cga had some glaring flaws when they fought dfm yes. sengoku gaming got dismantled by both DFM and V3. I was thinking, oh no, is it just going to be another one of those finals where it's just not, even if it's like 3-1 or something, at least I want the games to be a fight. And it feels like that's going that way at the very least. And if you're a DFM fan, there were still signs of hope in the early game, especially for the first 20 minutes of the game. It was pretty even. It wasn't until some of these team fights occurred and... I also Paz as a zombie scion securing the second dragon for V3, also assisting to a decent extent, I think. But DFM, there's definitely a chance, right, Nightmare? Absolutely. No, they were team fighting very well. Um, it wasn't as though V3 had a free lunch here. Um, mm. There is no such thing as a free victory in the LGL. Um, even, I mean, we've literally had 0-8 teams take down, like, our second place team. This is the finals. It's much clo more closely matched at that point, very high level stuff. And every single member of DFM had moments they could be proud of. I think that Gang had some really, really good tempered fates. Even though he was sorely missing that Leona, it's not like he was outside of his playmaking opportunities. Seros and Steel co um, comboing together to kill Archer in a very pivotal team fight. Yeah, mm. to get them their one dragon. There was kind of those glimpses of greatness, which we know DFM to possess. And against V3, to pr pull that out in the finals, it's a very big thing for DFM. It's huge for DFM, and it shows that these teams are going to be having a competitive series. I remember listening to the cast and initialize going, oh, well, we, we might be getting a five-game series because this is definitely competitive, especially in that early mid-game, I believe. That's when you said this, initialize. Mm. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for, right? That, that we continue to get this, at least to an extent. Even if I get a blowout one way than the other, that's just sometimes the way it is when people <laughs> snowball hard and you mm. that can happen. But I, I do want to see this kind of level of at least around some of those objective fights the same kind of style we saw some clutch flashes and stopwatches out of pop blossoms we mm. saw some great back steps and taunt interrupts on pass scion ultimates that kind of thing we're thinking at least on some of the micro decision making level i'm going okay you guys know what you're doing and that's great to see well, this is definitely going to make a great series for our podcast that I am going to be plugging here. We do run a weekly podcast where we cover all things LJL, officially unofficial in general, and all things LJL and League of Legends. We're definitely going to be having fun covering this series as a recap. It'll be coming out next Thursday. You can find it on our YouTube channel or all major streaming platforms. Gentlemen, coming into this next game, game two, v DFM will have side selection. One, that's going to be important to see where DFM go, as they seem to play both sides relatively well over the last three best of fives that we've seen them play. Over on the other side, though, we've only seen V3 win on everything, do everything well. If you're DFM, Coming into this second game, what do you think they need to change up, gentlemen, to really kind of put the level another point further where it's just a bit too hard to for v3 to meet up okay so i think there's probably one thing i want to call out a little bit at least in that mm. early game is you, you need to make a call a little earlier whether you want the turrets or the objectives because they kind of tried to half react to v3 doing both and kind of got neither okay. they were down they only got their first turret at 28 minutes of the game they fought for drakes and didn't really get them either mm. and that was what was seeding the problem was the map pressure and objective pressure was the real advantage that V3 had over DFM. And part of that is, so there's two things. First thing is, Lexi, you're completely right. I want to see a side change. I want to see DFM mm -hmm. take blue side. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Sam, in terms of map control, also going to agree with you. See, I'm great. I set you both up. Um, <laughs> don't just capitulate vision on the bottom side of the map if you've got a Shen. Don't do that. Uh, you have a Nidalee, you can contest for that kind of vision, even if you don't have power on the bot lane. There are ways you can start fighting around some of that vision. 
it got to the point where V3 had such a long early warning system onto what um, DFM were trying to do on the bottom side of the map that Archer and Rhino were not punished in that 2v2, even though they had the Chanel, even though there was a Nidalee who can be strong in the early game. DFM need to find a way to impact the area of the map they're supposed to be impacting with their draft because you can't just chain gank a Shen. No, you can't chain gank a Shen, but what you can do is have unique and diverse pools of champions if you're V3. We saw Reina pull out a Pantheon, something that you asked me to find for you, Nightmare, and uh, we had to go to 2019 to find it one game before this, and then we've seen another game from him. This is something we did hint towards. V3 do have a very wide champion pool, maybe the widest, because they're willing to play almost anything in certain spots in certain roles yeah, I agree, true that. yeah, yeah i should have corrected myself support, halfway through that, like, there are some people we go paz how much have you got in the tank ace we kind of know what we've come to expect from you maybe you pull out something a little odd for like sort of rumble in spring Oof. but generally speaking we have i missed that rumble but so do i don't, actually. don't we all fun. um <laughs> but <laughs> some mid laners out there going no <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that is true that there is they have got flexibility and depth in certain roles and you can wield that to some fairly strong effect say the pantheon pick this mm. well where do you guys expect things to go this match we saw it to be very competitive we saw how important boogie versus steel is for both these teams both junglers actually had a pretty good start and yeah. arguably what um i believe they had the best kdas for the early part of the game on both teams i believe steel, steel was four steel was four, like four one and, yeah. and something and i think at one point boogie was two one and three i think which was still one of the higher kdas on that v3 side yeah it's definitely true um i think both junglers have been pretty good and they played that oh, game yeah. pretty well frankly mm. from both of them i didn't feel like either one was it was kind of edges one way then edges the other eventually of course v3 to come out on top and literally a late game is a significantly better team fighter than Italy is but even so i'm gonna throw it out there i don't think anyone on dfm was massively outperformed no. besides maybe ebby mm, maybe Shen Eddie in that top the shed mm. really was not the kit pick which was turning this game i mean we saw uh tsm team liquid last night uh shen being quite impactful in that very series. impactful shen be very impactful oh across God. the board and ebby did not manage to pull it out in this heavy team fighting game he wasn't able to pull it out but maybe he'll be able to pull it out in game number two gentlemen we're into pick and ban phase so you know what time it is go for it gentlemen take it away Thank you so much, Lexi. We are indeed back onto the red. DFM just say, screw it. We don't have to deal with that Scion ever again. It's gone. It's done. V3 keep the Renex and the Heimerdinger bands, but they will go towards that Caitlyn ban, which means DFM insta-lock the Leona yep. for game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, the question is, what are you going to lose for this? I think Boogie probably snaps up Lilia. It depends what else they want to prioritize alongside that. Question is, actually, do you want to take maybe even the Nidalee away from DFM? Steel has mm. been playing this pretty much every chance it has been open to him. And Steel has been playing really well on that pick. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, so Your obviously we, we talk time. we talk quite a lot about, um, we talk about how we've worked with the VCS guys over on the VCS English. And I had some really good conversations about the, their Nidalee players over there and how um, you can tell the really good Nidalees from the okay Nidalees from not just the early game, but how do they team fight? Mm -hmm. Steel in that game, had some really, really good, good team fights. fights. He had the one kill to Archer, which ended up getting DFM the one dragon they had. This guy is a really proficient player of this. V3 are not going to show themselves their jungler early, though, and they're, uh, they're going to lock in the support. Other side, that Shen has come back. DFM Shen Leona, once again, very practiced combo. V3 had so and Lilia, their practice combo last game, mm -hmm. DFM get a chance to show us theirs. And this time it will not be Seros going in alone, which kind of felt a little bit like a bit of a pro the problem for DFM. Sion would take up the backline and Seros would go in and realize his backline couldn't follow because <laughs> there was a side who decimated the whole of his, all of his of, carries. <laughs> speaking of backline, we've got Nico, we've got LeBlanc. It's a run back, maybe not salty. I think both of those guys were relatively pretty happy, happy with, with their, yeah, yeah, pretty happy with their performances. Of course, they'll be salty at the loss, though, will DFM. So uh, maybe we'll revise that. My, my, mildly salty. Okay, so now we are set to dismantle the parts of the composition which were not played in the last game. Of course, that Sion ban came through from DFM. Yep. Very, very important. Paz does play Maokai. That mm. is a similar scaling uh, top lane, but it's more about disengage on that pick rather than hard engage unless you have that teleport available to you. What do V3 have in the tank 
to make sure that they have a similar engage option. Of course, they still have that Ash available to mm -hmm. them. They used that in the last game. But normally you want some supplementary engage to make sure that it's not just the Ash arrow coming out because then you can just build something like a Mikhail's or a QSS and suddenly you don't really have the same openings. V3 pinching the AD carry pool here because they've already got themselves the Ash in. They banned Caitlyn Senna and now the Jin. Aww. And DFM, get rid of I'm the sorry, Evelyn. Sam, I'm sorry, I'm Why? Sorry. They were saving that around, but it does mean that won't be an option <laughs> here. And Eve is just... <sighs> Kind of hard work to deal with if you're not careful. So instead, V3 thinking about picking up the Nidalee. Graves is still up, and that has been the matchup of choice around and about mm. these parts. It's, well, it's so the I wonder where they might go towards it. The, the three farming junglers, which we've seen a lot of, are Graves, Nidalee, and then Lilia. Mm -hmm. We've seen a couple of games of Olaf. V3 are not locking in Nidalee right now. They've locked in the Orn. And this is important because Steel's probably going to take Nidalee now. We know that. Yes. Um, the question is, what is Boogin going to pick? Because he's got the largest champion pool as Lexi was saying pretty much any jungler in the LJL even through across I mean I think his first game of the LJL this season was Diana jungle he's played some weird stuff okay well that's double poke locked in for DFM Ezreal and Nidalee now joining the engage options of DFM's Seros, Steel and Evie up there we picked up the other ones there See what V3 now want to go towards. They've got themselves a hefty uh, front line. Okay. And right, Boogie's right. Lee Sin comes out. This man has got quadra kills in three versus fives. He has absolutely revamped people's opinion of this champion in the LJL. He has done. However, now he has to go up against Gangs Leona. And Leona is one of those champions which can immediately shut down Lee Sin once mm -hmm. he starts going into a play. V3, for me, have to team up very, very well around how Paz and Archer are navigating the fights. If the Call of the Forge God comes out, the knockup comes in while Boogie is going in, suddenly Gang doesn't have the easy option to deny Le um, the Lee Sin getting into the fights. Yes. V3 might get themselves the burst combos and the picks that they need. So it is, once again, a heavy tank top laner for V3 versus the back laner of the FM. But it's not center this time. It is Utapon's Ezreal. What a famous pick that is. A little bit of the same, a little bit of the new. Mm. I've got to ask as well. Who does Boogie realistically kick in? You kick in Ezreal quite hard when he's got the Arcane Shift. You kick in Saros and he goes, thank you, free ultimate. Yeah. Like, there's not the easy carry to just kick in and feel happy about it. So Boogie's going to have to be pretty careful, I feel, on this lead to pick the right targets. <laughs> like, they banned my Evelyn. Time to... Kick it down mid. <laughs> okay. Kick it. Kick it down mid, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lee Sins don't just run it down, ladies and gents. They uh, they find ways to take somebody yeah, with they, them. Yeah, they, they do they do like handstands and kick flips and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. So we are loading into game. Um, I'm really looking forward to this TV too. Mm. That's one thing I'm going to say. Yep. I think Ezra Leona uh, has, a, well, so Ezreal has a lot of ways to proc Leona's passive. So she goes in with the Zenith Blade, you immediately follow the, Zenith, um, the Arcane Shift and you, ha you can proc that Sunlight passive. Whereas we know that Ash Thrash has been a favorite of both the players on V3, very proficient too. And they did win that early lane in that last game, just didn't end up working its way out into the mid game fights because that's when Senna mm. got a little bit fed. Just to remember that we saw Enti pick the Thresh into Gangs Leona the other day, and you could see the idea, right? You flay Leona out of the Zenith Blade is, is the plan. It didn't work all that well. Enti had a rough series, I think it's fair to say. Reiner oh, yeah. thus far has been pretty good. It was, he died a couple times, but some of those Aegis Assault Shields to keep himself alive were pretty this, stellar. This so I thing, expect right? a certain um, amount out of his Thresh. And the thing is, when you are playing against a player like Gang and also a team like DFM, they are really mm. willing to all in for just a support pick because often the support is the person taking the death for the rest of their team. We saw that a bit from Reiner on the Pantheon. Of course, he was sad like one or three for a while. You just said that. Um, but part of that is just also the way that DFM plays, not necessarily a fault of the player. Mm. Uh, you've also got to remember, like, it's not just Leona. It's Leona plus Shen. Leona goes in, you disengage her, Shen is on top of her, he gets the taunt from where she's already gone in. That was the combo they were running the other day. It looks really strong, it's only so far you can land it, only so far you can flash. And you've got to be kind of aware that the engage range of a Leona mm. with the Shen coming in on top is very long. I see the runes coming in, and there are, I guess there's, there are two things I guess. So it is still Conqueror Lee Sin, yep. you sometimes see Electrocute, but that's kind of neither here nor there. The important thing for me is there is Ultimate Hunter on Shen once mm. again from Evie. I didn't see that in the first game, of course, I didn't end up catching that. But that will be very important if early kills come in for DFM. Those Shen Ultimates will be coming down on significantly less cooldown. An extra 5-10% cooldown on a Shen ult because it's got such a long cooldown can save you, no, 10-20 seconds. Important to note here as well, to kind of pull some things away from the larger scale talks there because both junglers have started top side of the map. They are both pathing bot. They both want to be around this 
highly contentious bot side is v3 to get the early shove gang was shoved out of the bush with some good just straight auto attacks from archer frankly just mm. slowed him and walked him away and that does mean that v3 have the shove in and i mean versus ash not entirely surprising oh, but... biggie has his oh, level yeah. two he might have to safeguard onto a minion to find anything seros is kind of wondering you can in fact see the danger pings coming out and saying yeah pretty sure he's there and you can see the, the missing ping on the other side. Both of these junglers are so aware yeah, about where the yeah, other one could yeah. be. There's a so, ward in here as well so, that's spotting him out. This is the thing. Um, so uh, as a Lisa versus the Nidalee, you have to be very efficient about your time because you do end up falling behind in farm because Nidalee has one of the fast clear speeds in the game, as you can see, is going through this jungle at a pretty blistering rate, whereas Boog has only got those two camps. Uh, Seal has finished their fourth, mm -hmm. is now onto their fifth. One thing I really liked about what Ace was doing right there was making sure he had the wave on his side of the lane. In this kind of matchup where LeBlanc can jump forward, can chain, can uh, combo up with the Lee Sin. LeBlanc Lee Sin, one of the strongest mid-jungle TV2s in the entire game of League of Legends, means that those opportunities come a lot more easily because you have the lane and a good place for you to get that initial CC. You see as well, Boogie now still on vision has started up this river scuttle crab that Steel doesn't really want to fight, can't really fight, frankly, with where V3's bot lane are with the pressure they have. So they will secure that. Uh, Steel, though, has managed to clear out the entire bot side of the jungle and finds Ryder here as well. Gets an auto attack with the red buff, and that's about all you're going to find there. Both bot lanes are at level 3 though, and this could end up with some ganking one way or another. That's the Zenith Blade that lands! If the Lantern is there, but Archer's in trouble, the spear comes through, but we'll be just shy of anything more. And, uh, I wonder whether we're going to see some well, flashes going in there. You said, oh, both lanes are level 3, I wonder what we're going to see, and you immediately see a Reiner drop back, yeah. and like, he's just going to Lantern. And he does end up doing that, a good amount of HP away from Archer. Maybe you can end up blocking that uh, Lantern by standing on top of it, mm -hmm. or have a ward placed, and of course at this point in the game, you don't quite have so many control wards available to you to just completely litter that ward. Archer gets out fine, and uh, it's just at the cost of a bit of HP. And some stats there for Gangs Leona. Perhaps not the kill participation you necessarily expect, but I can guarantee you go watch his ridiculous play the last mm. couple series on this champion, and you'll know exactly why we have been so damn impressed. The eye test uh, ain't lying on this one, but Boogie now looking for his own gank in the bot side. That okay. is a hook onto Gang. The, the Eclipse comes out. There's the Flay. Gang has got Flash. Maybe we'll have to burn it, but that's the Zenith Blade first. Boogie gets onto Gang, but that is Boogie going forward and takes a fair amount of damage. It is Flash burned from the Leona. I love how Gang plays the Leona. He ends up buying that extra space by Zenith Blading to the other side of the Thresh after he's gone in. Gets himself that extra distance and then flashes away under turret. It is, uh, he still has Hex Flash, so at least that's still a bit of something they can play around on that bot side. Playing around oh, the top side gosh. though, Paz is building something, but he's not going to be able to complete it. The spear stops. Boogie him. and Ryan are coming. They're going to be here very, very swiftly. DFM needs to be fast, or it's going to be a 3v3 under tower. Here comes the teleport. Oh, DFM's still going to go for it. They're going for the top. That's going to be in, and that is the top laner down. Ace is here. Now, Ebby is in trouble. Sidestepping away, but I think he is sure to fall as well. He buys time and nothing else. He buys time, so both top laners die, and Ebby burns his flash. Uh, you do lose a wave to tower if you're Paz, and that's kind of sad. But at least uh, Boogie's relatively happy about that. He was falling behind in CS, twixt himself a tasty top wave. Oh, well, he's like, well, what do you know? That's great news. It does mean, however, <laughs> that this Shen is going to be significantly more impactful than it was the last game. Couldn't get the shove versus the mighty decimate from Zion. And we'll see this replay, see how it played out for DFM. So Paz was trying to build an item under turret, get himself some extra stats, but Steel, with a well-timed Spear, does put an end to that. Taunt comes in, Spear, and of course the Q from the Nico just adds in the extra damage, and the kill goes over to that mid laner. However, uh, that Shen finds himself on the wrong side of tower, and finds himself back in base. So he could possibly walk back the other way and use the flash, and maybe could have I forced him wonder if he would have taken an extra tower uh, shot. I wonder. That. I was my, that was my question. Like, do you think he could have made it? That's what I'm asking. I think because he was taunting the uh, the other way, he was mm. taunting into turret, I think it's quite hard. If he'd okay. been on the other side, if he'd been around the other side of turret and turret uh, kind of taunted the other way, maybe that works out. Just because of the positioning and the kind of the time deficit on that play, or yeah, just that timer, right? Because he has so many people running to that lane, quite difficult for him to outplay that. Sure. First Blood, though, went the way of Seros Nico, who's also got a fair amount of CS because Ace had to teleport up for that play. I think lost a wave to turret as a result. That's uh, mm. going to be that teleport down, and Seros still has his and pot blossom. So there is definitely some plays where this Nico coming in for a flank becomes a real terror. Gang manages to clear out the pink ward, and uh, that'll be it for now. Mm. So minimal gold lead for DFM, about five hundred gold. That's 
through farm. Mainly, you've got waves in uh, mid and top lane, which have gone the way of DFM, which haven't gone the way of B3, because, well, of course, Paz did lose his life and lose some minions to tower, and then we're talking about Ace losing that wave in the mid lane, also responding to that play. Also, talking about responding to plays and making plays, who gets in the bot lane might end up being a lantern gang gang has no flash remember steel is here as well there is teleport for seros and stand united that's the hook here comes the play but will the stand united be popped here it is teleports coming down as well rider trying to get out burning 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 stays alive but boogie will not call the forge god is here but it's at a very awkward angle still managed to get it utapon flashes out stays alive the teleport now coming in for seros paz is left alone left to die and utapon picks that one up and dfm play the teleport get the jungler and we'll move on to get the ocean drake as well you called it as it happened. More globals available for DFM, and they come up huge. There's no point in hooking someone like Leona. She just doesn't die quick enough for you to turn around that play before the Shen or the Nico or anyone else turns up. DFM get themselves two kills, not just the one, and they get themselves a dragon off of that. This time, it's not just DFM getting the kills in the early game, it's them getting the gold and the objectives. And it's not even like that Ebby loses the wave, because Paz teleported too, died in the bot side yep. as well. Yep. So Ebby's just like, well, I get to just walk back to top lane, still got my teleport for think, another go at this. I get the mentality. I get the mentality of let's make plays because Lee Sin is strong at this point in the game. But that doesn't necessarily mean that your team is stronger. Reiner gets engaged onto you. He uh, has the Ignite put down. He gets out, but it's just so much damage and not enough CC available for V3 to finish things off. I think Utapon's cleanse and his flash there were really, really good. Um, does end up... I actually, I think he maybe thought he was cleansing out uh, an Ignite. He doesn't end up doing that. Gets out of that last Brittle proc. I think Paz had a decent combo, but of course he dies. Ah! <laughs> Ebby secures, I think well, that was a steal onto this Rift Herald, but either way, it's yeah. secured by DFM. Gang is the recipient of the Her Eye, though, so possibly not the best option, but we have seen it starting to go more towards AD carries of late, so I suppose if a Utapon is still going to be linked up with the Leon, there's still room for that. Ebby moves back into keeping an eye on this wave, and you can see 20-odd CS there, 10 in the mid, mm. and... A little bit of one for this Ash, but that's possibly because we saw a little bit of roaming going on as a wave to collect for a Utapon as well. Also worth noting, this will be a Blade of the Ring King uh, Ash again from Archer. He played it in the last mm -hmm. game. It is lower damage. It's also lower CDR. You don't get yourself an Essence Reaver for sure. cooldown reduction. And I'm not a massive fan of it, I have to say. I think that Essence Reaver is the build which most Ashes go for. There are two tanks on the side of DFM to start chunking through. And if you are only hitting the Shen or Leona, it is a much more valuable... Well, it is a, a marginally more ma um, valuable build. However, with this game, I would really like to see the Essence Reaver just to have that extra engage option alongside the Call of the Forge Gun on slightly lower cooldown and all that stuff. So either way, it will not be... The option oh. still has to flash because Boogie hopped over the wall. He's like, I cannot be here. That got a little bit scary, but Steel does manage to escape. And Seros is still around. They could fight this. It'll be a 2v2, but there is a fair amount of ults and stuff available. V3's bot lane currently have priority, but it's not like DFM are that far behind. Rhino had no flash, and there was a Stand United, of, not Stand United, and his Solar Flash, that other ultimate, available from DFM's bot lane. So it was tentatively quite a dangerous situation down the bot lane for V3. I think that if they had ended up both roaming, there was a chance that Gang just engages onto Reiner and gets that free pick. Yeah. And still, though, will be down the flash as a result of it, but little else to be found. Kratz to Boogie as well for keeping up relatively well in farm. Uh, it's I all mean, that lane tax. Uh, it's all, it is genuinely, <laughs> probably is. Uh, that, that, he did get the full top wave, which I yeah. think did keep him up, otherwise that would have been a fairly significant difference, especially off that first clear. But uh, thus far, it is... Actually, about a thousand and a half gold lead, maybe mm. two thousand actually, let's be honest, so, to DFM right now. You know, uh, you're talking about significant differences, mm. and we talked about how the players are performing well or badly. Um, we said, well, I mean, I said in that post game of game one, the one player on DFM that may have been outperformed was Ebby. Mm -hmm. um, he's currently 30 CS up in lane. He's doing very well for himself. 1-1-2 one, one, and two has got involved in uh, two different unique champion kills, which means that he does have two ultimate hunter stacks. He's more than ready to start winning the side lane in this game, start teleporting around the map. He's feeling pretty good for himself. Definitely is. And you can see DFM roaming around with this Herald, thinking about, about Kasha Ace here in the mid lane. LeBlanc, not necessarily the best against Herald, can hop forward to try and get behind the eye, but, you know, not... Her wave clear is risky, I guess, what I'm trying to get. Yeah. Especially and if you don't, And also, in the same way that we're talking about how Leona can deal with Elise in jumping into the team, same thing with Leona, with, uh, with uh, Long Brother against Leona. Uh, so will they be able to get the distort off? It does look like they're not willing to commit for the entire turret. They're going to start channeling their recalls. Ezreal has gone for actually the tier into the Sheen, not into the pickaxe. It's not going to be the early 
Manamune to start stacking up to that Muramana quicker. I don't know the reasoning on that. I guess it's just for better poke potential in the early lane. However, that's the build which youth has gone for. Guess as well, it means he has got the Sheen available partly for that lane pressure, as you said. And mm. it also means that, like, okay, come up to this dragon fight, at least I've got a Sheen. Like, I can see well, that being important. Well, this, this is why you get a pickaxe. Yeah. Like, well, this is why pickaxe first has been so popular in Ezreal. It allows you to still have laning stats and deal with... Um, and you have lethal tempo, right? So you get to auto-attack a lot more when you go in. Um, but then it also means that if you go for Sheen, you do delay your uh, Mana Mune, which does stack quicker than a tier because it gives you six extra mana instead of that uh, four per stack and also lets you stack it on auto-attack. So for me, and he does actually get it on this back. It's just maybe that's been delayed by like a minute or two when he could have had um, that instead of the Sheen. I can kind of see that. I suppose the other thing is, I think he had that sheen for when the Shen play came right, through. Right. So it might have been just saying, like, look, we want to fight now. We know they're going to come down, but this is what we're playing for. And the thing is, you might be right. I want to go back and look at it. And I don't, I don't want to stake my name to it. And again, I'm a play by play. So, you know, take all I say with yeah, a pinch of salt. It's a lot of damage coming from Ebby. Uh, but Shen does so much here. damage in tank matchups. Yeah, he does. He's got himself the Barmy Cinder. He's got himself a pot, and uh, it means that it's going to be a bit harder work for people to come through. As Boogie doesn't step on the trap, this he doesn't see a pink a... ward, but of course he can't see the regular ward. Yeah, okay. If he needs to be a touch careful here. He's gonna might possibly find himself in trouble. That's a searing charge in Boogie coming out yet. Yeah, no, but the call before God is now here. Can Ebby dodge? Yeah, <laughs> and that is oh, pass. That's a stinker. Yeah. All right, now Boogie gonna get the kick the other way, gonna come in on top of Ebby, who's probably still dead here. He's got the Spirit's Refuge available. Surely, no, doesn't even get to use it, and that means that Boogie gets the kill. So that will mean the Drake goes over to DFM, though. Shen W is a pretty long cooldown. Doesn't mm -hmm. end up getting away from Boogie, and I believe that was a solo kill because uh, of uh, Orn missing, mm -hmm. so uh, missing his ultimate there and it resetting. Uh, yeah, a little bit unfortunate for Paz, but still, good kill onto Ebby. It means he can't teleport to the bottom side of the map, but he is up in 10 seconds. He might try and die of this bot lane turret. It's all about it. It'll be a lot of plates over the DFM, a couple more in the mid lane. I think four overall for Seros actually. We've had a massive shove in that lane. Uh, oh, they did have the Herald. The Herald as well, Herald of course. Course. Yes, thank you for the reminder. Indeed, they oh, did. Genesis. Saros does take a fair amount of damage, but that's a decent turnaround. Here comes Shen as well. They're looking to try and get onto Ace House to flash out. But that's the true shot for us. It does go wide. Ebby now here, but Paz getting knocked up, but the turret goes down. And now this Orn is left for dead. Pop Blossom comes through and Pop goes oh, the Orn. Paz. Second kill over to Saros. Paz is just not understanding the situation when he's teleporting into these fights. First happens in the bot lane. Does get a lot of damage. Cool. That's a nice combo, but you still die for it. You lose yourself a huge wave. You then die in this mid lane for the next teleport you use into one of these fights. Die as the turret falls. The turret goes down. It's going to be now the Herald, the second one of the game, going up to DFM mm. after he's died. And they have priority in, the, uh, in that middle lane. DFM, bring out to an early lead. Yeah, they've got the two drakes. It is unfortunately in some ways for DFM that air rift, cloud rift, I think is the actual term of it. Yep. So not the strongest rift ever, but you know, the likes of Shen can use it pretty well. That that additional movement speed, Leona's not bad with it, but we've got to go through a replay before we talk more about that. Oh boy, this is what I do. Um, yeah, Ace, about the, it. Ace misses the chain. Ace also then dodges back into the spear. The mind game is won by steel and you cannot, yeah, you, he, a, a takedown with the extra damage but with the mark applied to LeBlanc would have killed had the Shen not to. Uh, and of course that comes through. Power comes down as a uh trying to dissuade dfm they realize it is kind of a free kill though and they just take it anyway yeah the only thing being forged there was a death certificate i feel because do, uh, do, do you often for oh right i was thinking like do you have to make i was thinking like wow i'm gonna make well, another yeah, metal yeah, and yeah, like wait yes forge has multiple but, meetings because you know he was dead but the thing is he can't be dead because he's back alive and if you respawn uh, like, why would you need a death certificate wait is is this how is this how League of Legends like champions don't? We, we never hear about we, we never hear about League of Legends players or champions paying taxes. No, maybe that's because they're all legally dead and they've never had Genius. to. Genius. So the Call of the Forge God is actually, actually a forge, yeah, Call of the yeah. Forgery God. Call it. Call, yes, Can we oh. have a Crime City on skin where he's like yes. a forger? I really want that. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. We, I, I, our intellect astounds me. It, it is yeah, pretty I, scary. I, the, the bra my brain brothers. is so big. Yeah, oh, man. Uh, unfortunately, it is. All smooth. Yeah, it's, it's all smooth. All smooth. Yeah. I use it as a bowling ball occasionally. I don't need it. Oh, cool. um, okay. Oh, wow. Well, uh, slightly well, we'll, we'll keep you updated on the ongoing <laughs> investigation. There will be an inquiry into this news oh, of dear. forging various kind of documents within the League of Legends scene. Oh, we've got to keep our eyes. No, Orn is clearly a, a criminal at large. Speaking of people at large, though, Boogie and Ace looking to What's try next? and pull up a heist. What's next? Lee Sin's not actually blind? <laughs> <laughs> there was that that was that pool party meme around him for a while oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you never know um yeah. either way 
currently we are at a three-ish thousand gold lead for dfm they've thrown bigger leads versus v3 though before remember in the regular season it was a seven to eight k yeah. gold lead they threw in about the same sort of time rise right now that said, they are up two drakes. They got second Herald. They're looking pretty good in this game. Seros, though, oh. might find himself in a 1v1 versus this LeBlanc, which could get a bit scary, but has Merc Threads and a GLP. And that clone spots out Ace. Hmm. Well played, Seros. Yeah, okay. So he doesn't end up finding too much there. I do really think Ace probably mm -hmm. does need the mm -hmm. Banshee's Veil this time. I think he needs to be jumping in a little bit further because his team is not so far ahead. Um, and just denies another way for Leona to really make your game fairly difficult. Looking at where the gold has been distributed, of course that top lane's kind of awkward for V3 right now. The big thing for me, look at that mid lane gold oh, difference. That's huge. It's a slight lead of Archer, about 100-200. But that's it. Yeah, that, that, in fact, most of the gold lead mm. is within that mid lane. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no Ludens completed for Ace, whereas the two Glacial items coming in from Sarah. So he's able to use his Keystone uh, passive with the slows coming out of those items to its full effect. Meaning that if Ash gets tagged by a slow, or even Lee Sin, if he's not going to safeguard him, they just cannot kite around these fights. And suddenly they're taking a lot more damage because they can't dodge out anything. If he's been found by Boogie, does dodge out the Sonic Wave. That means that it looks like V3 just aren't going to contest for this third Drake. Boogie along that side, that top side. And they know that obviously with Ace the, in the space he is, and the fact he doesn't have that Ludens complete, they can't really fight this. It's two items to one and a half. Maybe if Ace got the back off, that would go down, but it's not. Yeah. Third tower goes the way of DFM, but it will be traded in the top side by V3. And DFM move into V3's blue side jungle before they retreat back to the Drake short. They've Ace got a lot of people there. Th I think Ace was oh, maybe... Oh, boy, he could be in trouble here. But that Tangle Barb just missing. He spawns over the wall. Oh, my God. That spear just missing. The Zenith plane just missing as well. Ace playing with fire. And a second turret goes down the way of DFM. But Ace manages to get out, even if... <laughs> He was uh, putting his yeah. life in his own hands there. Yeah. Good fancy feet, sir. If, if you can dodge a tangle barb, you can dodge a ball. He's uh, taking dodgeball to its, uh, you know, it's his core roots here, making sure he's dodging out and all these lethal mm. skill shots. He's going to miss out on that fifth D, which in League of Legends is not another dodge, it's die. So dodge, <laughs> dip, dodge dip, duck, dove, dive, and die. die. Yeah. Wow, that's I guess that really dodge, morbid. Dip, duck. Die. 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 It is that way. Okay. I, I, it's been a while since I've watched Dodgeball, so I apologize to the, yeah. the fans out there. Um, someone correct me later on. Find me on yeah. Twitter. That'd be the way to do it. Um, <laughs> and we'll move on oh, from there. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. What do you want to talk about next? What's, what's next up on your well, agenda? Let, what's we, on the script? Sam? I think we what, probably do need to do, do a little bit of a check in here. Now we've kind of mentioned some of those item discrepancies. It is three drakes to none right now but it's also been like two items in the jungle to not a completed black cleaver for, mm. for boogie uh shen's up this titanic hydra there is at least a sunfire cape in for all who's managed to come back into this game by being around for that tower take in the top side but the shen still pretty happily being able to shove in the side lane with the sort of double wave clear items of the barmies and that titanic as we were saying Ezreal going towards a Trinity Force as well, which I, I approve of in this game, I think. I do. I, I think I also approve of it because he's going to be the person cutting through on the most mm -hmm. this game. I Oh, Ace actually caught out in the top lane. Utabon just stepping up. Boogie's around as well, but Utabon fearless here. Uh, you can't commit to that fight as LeBlanc. If he does walk up alone, yeah, you probably end up landing a chain and killing him. But because the rest of the members were in the same area of the map from DFM, Ace can't really commit to that fight. Just decide just to use his ultimate, uh, his mimic on the distortion mm. to get out with that double mobility. Okay, well, with that, we're still in a kind of a bit of a lull state here. Probably DFM waiting around to see what they're going to do about this fourth dragon V3. Looking to find, find maybe something on Ebby. He was coming behind Paz, but Boogie's around. He's on a war, though, so Ebby needs to think about getting his way out. He's uh, going to taunt, but that's the call of the forge. Got to try and get a knockup. Flash from Ebby gets him out, but that was a little over-eager from the DFM top player You know you're saying, like, uh, you use that large brain yours to go bowling sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, while Paz is only finding gutter balls right now with these ultimates, he no longer has his ult available for a play somewhere else on the map, which means that DFM feel very confident just walk up wherever they want. There is no pressure on DFM to force anything. Baron's not alive. They can wait for the soul. They have so many things that they can wait for. And V3 are kind of at the whims of what DFM want to do right now. Mm, and you could sort of see that at least they get the flash out of Shen, but it's, he's got taunt. It's not the biggest thing for him. I mean, it means flash taunt is down, which is always yeah. a terror in team fights. Um, but that was all they got for it. And so... Kind of at this point, we're still in this waiting game. We're still waiting to see where this game will go, and that's a fairly significant vote in favor of DFM here from the AI bot. And uh, 
what do you know? It's blue side again that's coming out on top uh, and, in this in this series. And don't get me wrong, Blitzcrank Bot has been wrong before. Oh, yes, we have has. seen ninety five percent victories go the way of the other team because of some crazy fights, because of certain misplays and other situations evolving around the map. Um, however, DFM have themselves sold point. They have themselves a gold lead. They have themselves a two item spike on Ezreal already. That's what I was going to go for. Yeah. I was, I was like, wow, Sam wants to talk. I better cut off my point. No, he's, he's got his two items. We, nah, we're, 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 we're go everyone towards. is painfully aware of the fact and V3 will be subjected to that sooner rather than later. And Utapon has been, as we said, the best consistent performing member of DFM this split. Really hope he has himself a good finals to solidify his split for himself. Because uh, yeah. now he has the tools to do so with. Another side though, Archer has continued to farm really, really well. They've been funneling a lot of this farm into him. You can see he's well over that 10 CS a minute mark. Probably at the cost of Ace, if I were to imagine, looking at the CS discrepancies here. At least means um, that either Archer has managed to get his way to those two okay. items. And there's a, there is a Ludens here for this LeBlanc as well. Yeah, though, part least. of it is Ace, um, you know, not being prioritized over Archer's damage. And Archer, speaking of which, might get engaged onto here. But you can see how Ryan is positioning. He has the Lantern, clears out the wave, goes right back to his support. But also a lot of this is Ace not really succeeding in the 2v2 with Boogie. Mm. We know that Ace is not really good in lane. You know, this is our main problem with this guy. Even though he finds himself champions to make himself effective, it feels like he has to do that because he's not as strong a laner as someone like Kyrian, mm. Arya, or Syros even, right? Mm. You know, a lot of players, or even Dasher, right? Yeah, a couple yeah, of Dash really good premier laners within the LGL, which can really stress that laning phase. Um, Ace has used stuff like LeBlanc to start skirmishing very effectively, but he's not found early leads, and that means that he really can't stand up in lane. All right, Ace in behind, but he's on a ward. DFM now coming back to try and contest for the vision. The spooky ghost does find Ace, it finds Paz, and now this LeBlanc could be in a spot of bother. The Sonic Wave missing. Potentially dangerous, but nothing else to be found. DFM do not want to give up River Control. There is at least a Scuttle Crab that's been secured by B3. That's great. Clone Paz? of Sarah's, but now Paz. Why are you there? What a very aggressive route. That will be What's his flashed out, but here comes the call of the forge. God, Sarah's going forward. Finds a massive pop loss, and that's flashed out by Archer, so not as big as I was expecting. Here comes Ace trying to get onto Steel, who's taken pretty low, and DFM actually are losing this fight. Ace, though, has also taken a big chunk now. Reiner, low, but look at Archer, Ooh. who takes a true shot barrage to the face, and it's the wallet at this point that is the real weapon of DFM. They are so far into the one. Steel flashing forward. Gets onto Archer. The Ash is dead. Reiner is here. Boogie gets to go for with a safeguard the spear doesn't quite get the kill but boogie falls for a double it'll be utapan that cleans up the lee sin oh. and they get four for none they'll get cloud soul and with the jungler dead for another 30 seconds i think they can look to baron nymera dfm pounce when the opportunity is presented but why did v3 present such a juicy opportunity Cloud Soul is not the same as Infernal Ocean or Mountain. It is the weakest of the souls. I think you will not in a position to fight. They choose to anyway. And with all of the members dying and that soul still going over all the same, V3 are now in a very, very bad spot. Ace would have to try oh, good to Lord. steal, but this is what Ezreal does on two items. Even LeBlanc has nothing to say about it. Trishop Barrage, not this time. Utapon's blind snipes have been... Somewhat legendary, honestly, in the LJL, this split, even when DFM struggling a bit. But Baron goes down, Ace survives, but DFM move up to an 8,000 gold lead. They have the Cloud Soul, they have four turrets, and they have game two in their eyes. <laughs> Determined to turn the tables on V3. Lost that first game, but that will not be uh, dismaying them too much if they were mm -hmm. to take this game in such fashion, because honestly, V3 had to fight fairly hard for their victory. DFM right now seems to be relatively confident, calm, and collected about this one. So watch, you can see Paz just walks in a very I, I unusual path. I don't, I don't get why he's doing that. You have no vision control. You are not uh, someone who can tank up everything. And that alt placement, the initial alt placement, misses about three different members. He doesn't split the team. He doesn't get the double brittle mark. A lot of damage is missed out on. Paz is having a difficult game, whereas Ebi immediately gets on top of LeBlanc. LeBlanc is left at 250 HP, oh. cannot impact this fight any further. That means that Utapon is free to just keep jumping forwards, and so is Gang. No one is now a threat of being one-shot because Ace is no longer a threat. Archer, therefore, also doesn't have enough space to work in either. It's his first death of the game around that fight, but that might just be the one death which matters. And DFM swiftly break the base in the mid lane. Tier 3 down, inhibitor down, and DFM surge as a four-man unit to look towards this top wave, which is not in the best of positions, granted, but 
with an inhibitor already down, they don't necessarily need to care that it's not there it's, as efficiently as they would okay, like, because so they've done what they needed to. It's also 26 minutes in, and the later the game goes, the faster minions move across the map. They have Baron Buff, and they have Shen, Alt, and Teleport. This will probably end up reaching the inner turret by the end of this Baron Buff. They'll probably still take down that turret. Mm -hmm. And they're going to do that oh. after resetting. Boogie finds Ebby, but I don't know if it... Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right, Ebby's... Kind of does a lot of damage here, and Boogie's struggling here. That's just Titanic Hyper. He gets a kick flash. The Ash Arrow comes in, flash out from Ebby, though, and he's still looking for the fight. This is, oh, man. This is what Lee Sin is reduced to. This is a full tank Shen. Well, I mean, it's just a Shen that's built up his, more, his core items, has another two cloth armor in inventory. So, so tanky. A Black Cleaver really is not enough on this underleveled Lee Sin to deal damage to this guy. Uh, it is, and that is the problem, right? We said he was going to struggle for targets to kick in. He's gone for Shen a couple of times, not found it. That death sentence was inches Ooh, away geez. from Utapon. It doesn't work out. I think we had cleanse anyway, so might have been enough to burn something, but either way, it's not even going to manage that. It's another inhibitor down. And DFM look to sync up with their top laner, who has been far too wily in that so bot side. About that, they've the reached the top lane land. inner. They've done the top lane inhibitor. inhibitor They've got double hex flash coming oh, over. Oh, good lord. Boogie thinking no. carefully about going forward. He has no flash. He has got Dragon's Rage, but it'll be the bot lane inhibitor turret, not the inhibitor. <laughs> Just... And DFM will back out and look to reset. Correction, single hex flash. Turns out only one person has it anyway. It does use it to go over the wall. I and they get that. Out like that but I mean, I, I, look, okay, I, I am very self-aware as a caster. I know when I have made a mistake. I know I've been a bad, I've been a bad caster, Sam. Please forgive me. Well, like, look, <laughs> I am, I'm a professional. I didn't want to do it. But there is also the side of me that is, in fact, still your old brother. Oh. And there is this room where I just need to, like, point the fingers and laugh at you right. when you make that kind of mistake. So, you know, I'll point <laughs> so a finger and go, ha! It's only the one hex flash. You, you fool. <laughs> you smooth brain fool. Uh, well, I we've think... got a game pause. That's how embarrassed the game Sam, is. Oh, this. No, yeah, that's the problem. They've actually given you an extra allowance of time to make a mockery. Of it. <laughs> you don't need to do that. You do that yourself, clearly. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> we joke. I promise. And this is a promise. He's not crying yeah. on off screen right now. The, the sound you're hearing is, is not, not him sobbing. Wah. Wah. Yeah. yeah. Wah. See? True, yeah. true trauma. Okay. Well, looks like. Okay. Um, so, game pause has come in. Of mm -hmm. course, we are in studio. Did look like the camera panned over to V3 first. I'm yes. wondering whether it's a uh, issue with one of their players. Obviously, we won't speculate. We don't have any information on that front. So please bear with us in the time being. And uh, let's go on to some downtime topics. What do you got for me, Sam? Well, have you got the weather report? I, I, I don't. I'm looking outside the window. It's actually a lovely yeah. blue sky out there. Of course, we're not in Japan. No, but... we're not. Um, much to our shame, really. But there we go. Um, it's a lovely day. It's made better by the fact I'm here casting LJL with you. We've, oh. got, we've got Mass one on the desk, being his lovely host self as always. And actually, I, what a way to round off this split. So yeah, far. it's um, it, genuinely true. It's yeah. it, we've kind of talked about that. We couldn't really have asked for two better team for the narratives here to be. In the no, final. Absolutely not. Absolutely um, not. DFM have been the face of the LJL for so damn long. It would have been. We would have been missing something if had they not. Mm. I, a lot of me does say, hey, maybe, maybe it's time for someone else but DFM to win. But seeing it in the final, that's when it matters. That's when it really matters to me. So, like, I want to see DFM their best, and I want to see a team overcome that. It's like when SKT yes. at, were, were the well, won three, three worlds, won two back-to-back. -back. The immediate thought is, we really want to see them at their best when they're taken down. Yeah. That's the immediate thought. It's the same with any team which wins so much. G2, uh, TSM, all mm. of these teams which have had these long histories. And uh, looks like we are back into games, so we'll stop waxing lyrical quite so much. But yeah, DFM, I want to see this performance out of them. Yeah, if uh, they do take this game, I want V3 to have to fight hard to get this victory. Exactly. I am tired of boring finals, and this one isn't looking to be that. The fact that we have at least got some fight here, the DFM are looking to clean out the second game, is good news. They are nearly 10,000 gold. They're down. They need about 500 odd to get to that point. Boogie here was clearing out a top wave because what else are you going to do at this point? But they have their base in shambles and they're so far behind i don't even think they outscale this squad ebby is about to get ganked by every single damn member He's gonna find his way out has no flash the taunt's coming down that'll be a kick into the wall into the arrow the spirit's refuge comes down but it's ebby versus the world and he's not gonna win this one the call of the forge gods i think went just wide there but it's not going to matter no, no, dfm it, okay first that one did hit it looked a little bit off center okay, it turns okay. out the hitbox is relatively large um, it is gold over to the side of V3. That's nice. They get themselves 
to kill its archer who has himself really? three items and an upgraded infinity edge. Okay, turns out Ash is actually relatively strong at this point. They are still 9,000 gold behind and have to face down against a Cloud Soul and no extra time to scale because the Elder is up in a minute. Yeah. There's still something for V3. Now they have to do this with three inhibs down and you know what DFM do when it comes to late game objective fights and open nexus. They have teleports in their summoner they spells. Do. I'm looking out to see if DFM are going to pull the smoke and mirrors again. Okay, so that is the point of power for V3. Can they keep Archer alive? Because Ace is a chain bot right now. He's a distraction. He's a, he's a mobile ward. That's kind of where he's reduced in this Dude. game. And it feels cruel, but that's the way it is. Molten Edge is there, and that's going to be Boogie slowed down. He's not going to get the reset he was looking for. DFM over this wall. They're going to try and get onto Archer. Oh. That's the Zenith Blade. He's got Cleanse. It's going to be burned, though. Solar Flare yet to be used. The teleport in the base. Epi is here as well. And DFM have killed the power player. And now Paz is here as well. He's teleported in. He's going to have to flash straight out, but he's being slowed down. The GLP comes out. And that particular Hexet contraption forces out a stopwatch from the Orn. And he falls as well. He, not before he takes a Lantern, though, but Sarah still secures that kill. Ace takes an auto attack to face and loses half his health bar. And now DFM with one Waves of super minions and a five versus three and another Zenith Blade landing from Gang, the god of Leona, forces him back to the fountain again. And DFM will not seed this second game. They clean this one out in stomp of a fashion. Left bloodied by game one. They have to just wipe their lip, just clean themselves up for game two, and then they mm. take no prisoners that was a dominant performance they ended up winning every single lane winning every single fight and closing it out well nice to see a statement response the series is evened up one to one but we're gonna take a very swift break so we can collect our thoughts and we'll be back with mass one on our analyst desk to break it all down for you go absolutely nowhere Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to the LGL officially unofficial coverage the analyst desk covering the LGL 2020 summer finals. I am still your host, Alex Alderweiss, and I'm executed by Master on the internet. We've got our color commentator, Nightmare. We've got the play-by-play -play cast, so initialized, but now they're analysts, ladies and gentlemen. They're now analysts, they pretend to know more than they actually do know. Detonation, focus me, however. Do oh, seem to that. know things as they had a damn good game versus V3 Esports this time round. They really did. Um, like, uh, basically for me, I think like the fact that DFM read what V3 wanted to do very, very early, like mm. bot side play, was huge with Shen coming through. Shen was an impact this game, uh, and honestly, pretty much every lane of DFM came out on top. 
even the bot lane where I actually got a lot of CS, Utapon mm. was still hitting his item break points pretty happily. Also, big turnaround from Ebby from game one, too. Mm. You know, we'd had some question marks. The Shen was really not making the impact mm. we wanted it to. Uh, night and day difference in this game. Well, that night and day difference I seemed to bleed into the other side, actually, of the top lane. And Paz had a, a rather disappointing show, uncharacteristic for how this player has played most of this split. He's also been one of the better on players in the LGL. Yeah. Maybe Nap is the best from CGA, their top lane across game. Maybe. Yeah. But it's not like Paz has been a slouch. He is a tank player. His sign was really good in game one. Maybe now he, that is uh, that comfort pick has been removed. Mm. Seeing some holes in V3's champion pools, which of course we have praised before in a number of roles. But remember this guy in spring only played like four, play four champions before playoffs. <laughs> Allow me to speculate for just a second or two. You've got to remember that Orn has been the recipient of nerf after nerf after nerf. True. I've been seeing so much of him, and like honestly, the go-to top laner for a lot of tanks has been the Shen, right? And a little bit of this Scion, and you kind of saw why, because Ebi was winning pretty much all of those trades, was zoning Paz off from the wave, like levels one, two, three, and could be a bit of an issue in terms of the champion there. Another on the opposite end, though, of the map, the bot lane of Detonation Focus Me had a damn good showing. Gang specifically, our MVP from the previous DFM Sengoku series, on this Leona. Again, he's just so good at this, and I'm pretty sure when it goes back to blue side V3, it's going to be banned again. Yes, and uh, we have a, a series on our hands. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. why couldn't you put it on some paper? Because it's not on my hand at that point. Uh. Series on my hand. Okay, yeah, but no, the bot lane of DFM <laughs> showed up huge, and they are here to play. Uh, we were talking about in game one, very early on, and into the mid game. These are the two best performing uh, bot lanes in the LGL. Mm. They are very, very proficient players. Reiner was uh, either our mid split MVP or our runner up for it, definitely in contention for mm. all that. But Gang has been on some seriously good form. Harkening back to his performance in the finals last year when he was the player in the Ooh. series when we cast that series, uh, when we were practicing uh, the very start of our casting uh, road path. And yeah, I think that... But yes, I think that the <laughs> FM's bot lane are going to be absolutely pivotal in the coming games, and I hope they keep up this level of uh, form. Yeah, and he did that on Thresh, so now we're seeing it from MVP in our finals, potentially on two virtually very different champions in play styles from the support role. DFM were able to turn this around. This was decisive victory from them. They got over that 8k mark, which is important to note because that is the point where DFM still were able to lose a game versus V3 when they were that far ahead. This time round, Detonation Focus Me look far more confident in their plays. They're playing far more like a unit. And this is the DFM we were expecting to see from, realistically, the beginning of the summer split. Yeah. Yeah, it's, they're looking significantly more dangerous. The players are syncing up a lot better. They feel like they've got a better read on the meta as well, mm. and that's great news. I mean, on, on the other side, though, I think they also did a fantastic job of, of playing versus V3's playstyle as well. That Lee Sin couldn't really find an entryway into that game, especially after it was last picked, right? That was the counter pick, and DFM read it really well. It was always going to be a difficult game for the Lee Sin. Kind of proved out to be that way. Yeah, DFM just had everything. They got all the dragons. They got the soul. Any team fight that V3 tried to contest uh, never went well. It, it, there was never one team fight where it didn't go well for V3. And DFM got the early victory and, well, got the early lead and turned it into a victory. Have to commend them on that, really, don't we, the gentlemen? I think that the real turning point for me was that one gank bot lane when Lee Sin, Lee Sin came down. They engaged onto the flash of Leona, and then Shen yeah. comes in. And Paz comes in and dies after dying bot lane. At that point, like, okay, look, Lee Sin has the early pressure. You understand that V3 are trying to make plays around that, because they've done that the entire split. They've tried to make early plays happen when they have the tools to do so. They completely misread the situation and compound the issue. And it didn't go very well. However, game three is upon us, gentlemen, soon. However, we're going to take a very short break here over here on the LJ Officially Unofficial. When we come back, we'll be talking about Game 3 expectations and then that glorious pick and ban phase. Don't go anywhere.